Yeah, I'm Mike Matthews, you know, founder and president of Electromonics. I do a lot of different things. Back in the mid late 70s, I was doing a lot of business with individual uh, communist countries like Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Poland. And then in 1979, I got an invitation to exhibit at the first trade, consumer trade show inside Russia, open to Western companies. And so I got carried away with that. I said, wow, this is Russia, you know, it's the biggest country. Uh, there's got to be some business there. So I got carried away and took a whole bunch of rock and roll musicians that were my favorites. Cookie, this dynamite drummer from Ithaca, New York, uh, and, and several other guys. There was uh, six of us in the band, including me on keyboards. And one setup guy and another guy, Bob Bednars, who designed a lot of this gorgeous electronic art. So this is a, a, a reprint of the story of Electromonics Goes to Russia. And whenever the band would go on, it, it, the, all the exhibitors were crowded over different buildings throughout, throughout the fa uh, fairgrounds in Sokolniki Park in Moscow, which is like Central Park here. And uh, in our building, there was just two American companies, about 15 Japanese and 25 German companies. The American company was Levi, the Dungaree company. And whenever the band went on, the sound reverberated throughout the whole Sokolniki Park. Everybody rushed in to see these crazy Americans. You could see the crowd there. And, uh, and this is on our website, this story. And um, anyway, it turned out that I misguessed. All these different state organizations wanted to buy stuff from us, but they had no money. So I started thinking of what can I do to buy uh, uh, goods from Russia, and because uh, they need they need hard currency, and uh, one thing led to another, and eventually I was visiting the Ministry of Electronics uh, when everything was centrally controlled, uh, and um, I forgot what year, but hanging on the wall were vacuum tubes. And so I, I got some samples, took them out to my friend, uh, Jesse Oliver, who designed all the early Ampeg uh, amps. And he, he tested them. And uh, he said, yeah, hey, these are good tubes. So that's how I got involved with the vacuum tubes. And now we ended up uh, owning the whole vacuum tube company. There's only three companies in the whole world that make vacuum tubes, one in China, one in the Slovak Republic, and the one in China, the government is forcing them to close down at the end of December and move to a new location because they want their primary location for a more modern business. So uh, right now there's a, a rush. They've already run out of some two models. There's a, there's a rush. Uh, there's a lot of panic buyers uh, looking to to buy uh, vacuum tubes uh, because they won't be able to get them and they can't get some even now of the Chinese uh, models. So that's a, that's a boon to our business. And it's not so easy to move the, the, the tube equipment. All this equipment is old equipment and it breaks down. There's a lot of different equipment and um, I think they're going to be closed for at least a year. They're going to lose some of their skilled workers and, um, you know, that's the way it goes. Everybody needs a big muff. Uh, right now, we're doing fabulous with the Ram's Head Big Muff reissue. We have several different Big Muff models, but in total, all the Big Muff models in total are, are selling thousands every single month. I didn't think the Mod 11 uh, was going to be a big seller but it's turned out to be a real solid seller. The Mod 11 is, um, has the advantage that it uses the same exact circuit board 
as our Ocean's Eleven and our Canyon. And it's just the program, the software that's different in the chassis. So we were able to get that out pretty quickly and reorders are, are solid and steady. If you want to check out Electromonix pedals, go to AMS, American Musical, uh, dot com. And uh, I only got one more thing to say, and that is rock and roll.